what's up guys Sean the bro here and today we're going to be coming over our first episode for auto detection of player controllers and controllers in general so what this means is we're going to be able to play our game and we are going to have several different devices we can use so the first device that i think of to use is the keyboard this is what we've been mainly working in or at least what i've been mainly working in when working on this tutorial series we do have controller support for most of our menus if not all depending on how you set up your menus and we do have the ability to control the character with a gamepad so i have my player here being controlled by keyboard i have player two also able to be controlled by keyboard Okay, that's something we've had for quite a while. Now, I also have the ability to control a character with a gamepad and actually control the other character with a gamepad as well. Now, in this case, I only have one controller plugged in, so I'm doing somewhat of a mix between uh, gamepad and controller. Okay. But regardless of what you're using, the point is you're going to have multiple different ways to play your game. If you want to put it on Xbox or PlayStation, you're going to have to use their controllers for support. If you're putting it on Steam, you can have a large variety of, of choices that you can support as well. And so we need to kind of be able to figure out either what type of controller we're using or force the build to use that type of controller. I would like to be able to use multiple different controllers and figure out what type of controller it is and then support that. The main reason for this being D input controllers are not supported within Unreal by default. D input controllers are something like your PlayStation controllers. So I'm trying to come up with a way to support all controllers, no matter what their their type is, if you will. So we're going to use keyboard, X input, and D input controllers at the least. That's what we want to support. So anyway, with that long introduction, so part one, what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to be able to switch between using a keyboard and a gamepad in the middle of a play session. Okay? So we're essentially going to be able to use both. We weren't able to do this before, and that's because when we have, uh, we have this manual setting, if I actually go back to the main menu, we can go down to our settings menu, and we can take a look at our settings that we set up. Now, we have this all players in one device keyboard mode. In the previous episodes, if this was enabled, keyboard would be the only input device that would work. This is because we have functions that separate our move right logic and our move right controller logic. Meaning we could control each character with both a keyboard and a gamepad before, but we had some separating logic for things like input axes, like the move right. That way we couldn't do both at the same time. This is because we don't necessarily want to have two input devices go to one player at one time. For example, if we had move right and both a gamepad and the keyboard could trigger that logic, then what could potentially happen is we could play our game and we could press right on both input devices at the same time. When doing that, what we'd actually be causing is uh, we'd, we'd walk extra fast or run extra fast because we're doubling the input. Uh, we could also trigger double inputs for our input buffer and command list. So we have two options here. We can either continue along what we're doing where we have two separate functions, or we can block one input entirely. What we're going to be doing today is allowing both within the same match. Now, that's not both at the same time. They're still separated, but we are going to allow us to switch between the two. This is keyboard. This is gamepad. Now, you may not want to be able to swap on the fly like that. But if you've ever changed controllers or your controller batteries died when you were in the middle of a match or a game of any sort, really, then you may notice it comes up with the screen that says, you know, controller disconnected, press A to continue or whatever. When we get to that point, which is coming up very soon, the next few episodes here, probably the next episode, we're going to need to be able to swap controllers based on what input is chosen. And so what I want to do in today's episode is set it up to where we can switch between gamepad and keyboard this easily. Then it's just a matter of connecting the rest of the logic to make sure that we are pressing the right input on that screen and then that's switching over the controller we're using. This is also incredibly important for something like the side selection screen. I've seen it done in a few games where the image that is generated depends on the input device that the player is using. So you might have a keyboard go to one side, but then 
gamepad go to the other side, something like that. So the icons can also be displayed properly depending on the device that we're using. And same for the input buffer. Now, in this case, our command list is standardized, so it has like light, medium, heavy, special. But in the options menu, we're going to have a control screen at some point, and we're going to want to display the correct images. So, for example, if we're using an Xbox controller, I have a wired Xbox controller here. So I have an X input controller with the X button, A button, B button, Y button. Well, these correspond to my attacks in the game. So on the controller menu, I may have those buttons showcased or an image of the Xbox controller showcased on the controls menu. But if I'm using a keyboard, it's gonna be different. And we can actually separate that logic and determine what image we should display based on what we're starting today. So with all that out of the way, we can go ahead and get started. But before we do, if you want to get caught up to this series, this is the fighting game tutorial playlist in the top right corner right here. You can click on it, check out everything we've done and see how far we've come from the very beginning of this series. We still have a lot of stuff to do, but we're doing great and and moving along as quickly as we can. If you're not interested in that, you can also click this right here, which is where we set up our initial controller logic for our series. We are gonna be using a lot of that controller logic today because we are going to be controlling our, our characters with the controller and the keyboard. But the keyboard comes pretty naturally, so the controller here is the one that you may wanna check out as a preface to this video. All right, and otherwise we can go ahead and get started. So there's a few things I wanna do right off the bat before we get into the code or anything. I want to adjust some of our uh, input actions and action mappings to make this a little bit smoother to you know, avoid confusion in the future and also get rid of things we don't need because that's always good to clean up our code and logic. So we go to edit project settings and we go to input. We can go to where our action mappings are. Now there's some action mappings that I want to change and some I want to remove. So we had add to input buffer P1 and add to input buffer P2. These were basically forced uh, action mappings that had all the values that we could press on either the gamepad or the keyboard, and it would add things to the input buffer. But we figured out a better way to do this that, that was based on the actual events themselves, and we don't need to manually track these individual inputs. You can still use them if you want. It's not going to hurt anything, but I haven't been using them for some time, and I think it's time to get rid of them because... The more action mappings we have in here, the more confusing the next few episodes are going to be. So I'm going to get rid of them. We don't use these anymore. Okay. If you want to check if you use them, you can. Here's how you can check. So first of all, you can go to your code, go to your controller, and make sure you don't have any of those names here in these strings. You'll notice I don't use add to input buffer P1 or P2. Not in the controller, not in the character either. Because we do have the uh, setup player input component function in the character still, but I also don't have it in there. So, so I don't use it anywhere in the code. And the other place you could use it is the base character blueprint. So base character BP, I come in here and I can look for input, I think it was add to input buffer, I think is what it was. Now in here, I have two input actions, but you see it's called old input buffer logic P1 and P2. They're both disconnected. And these are using the old functions that we set up. This is before we were even using frames and that sort of thing. So I'm going to actually delete all this logic. I had it commented out and left it in here, but I'm going to get rid of it. Okay. I also have an old input buffer comment here I'm going to get rid of and old removal input buffer logic I'm going to get rid of that this become AI stuff is something we haven't gone over yet and you don't have to worry about that just happened to be right next to my other logic but I want to show you I'm getting rid of that it's fine if you don't have that if you already got rid of it doesn't matter just want to show you I was getting rid of that that's first things first we don't need those inputs anymore all right that's just gonna make things more complicated if we leave them. Now let's go back to input. There's two other things I wanna do. So first of all, I have this open pause menu, which is essentially our start key. 
and it's only bound to the P button. Two things with this. So first of all, I actually want to add a gamepad start for this just because I noticed that we didn't have it. It's one of the only input actions that we can't do on gamepad, mainly because we added this action mapping after the gamepad stuff and we never went back and fixed it. For convenience, I'd like to add it in now. What I want to do is the special right, gamepad special right, that's essentially the start button on your Xbox 360 controller or your standard wired X input controller like I have here. Okay. And I want to rename this from open pause menu to something like Start input. I'm not going to do a P1 and P2 for this because if you're on gamepad, it's always going to be the start button. If you're on one input device like a keyboard, we only need one start button anyway. So I'm going to call it start input. And that means I have to rename it in my uh, controller from open pause menu to start input. And then again, if you're using it anywhere in your base character BP, open pause menu then you'll want to go ahead and find it and then use it but i'm not so it's fine that i renamed it last thing i want to do is scroll down we have this any key menu that we set up and this was for literally the press any key to continue menu and we bound an action to it and basically if any input is pressed we go ahead and skip that screen okay and what i'm talking about is right here if any input is pressed, we skip the screen. Doesn't matter if it's gamepad, keyboard. That's fine, but we can actually keep any key for a lot of different things other than menu. Again, we can keep it to determine if we're swapping between gamepad and keyboard, if we have to change controllers, if it's waiting on any input to progress like an end result screen. So I don't wanna call it any key menu. I actually do wanna just call it any key. It's a little, it's a minor change, but I think keeping it with the menu there is going to make things more confusing in the end because the things that I left as menu here were intentionally for keyboard mode fixes and hacks and I don't want any key menu to be related to that because it's not it's just any key so I'd recommend renaming that and once you change this from any key menu to any key we have to make sure we catch everywhere that it could be affected by this so specifically where we used it is in our widget for our press any key screen. If we go to the graph, we were listening for the event any key menu here. See, the end of event construct here, we were listening for any key menu. I'm gonna change this to any key. All right, so it matches the actual string. And now when I launch this, I'll still be able to get through the menu fine. So that's how you know it worked. If you can't get through this menu, then you know it didn't work. Because if I just put like K and we're searching for that, well, guess what? When I press something, I'm not going to be able to get through this menu. So just make sure that you can get through that menu and you know that you've done everything correctly. Now, on to the important stuff for today's episode. That any key that we just set up in the project settings, let's go back to it one more time. The any key here is something we need to capture on our player controller. That way we can do logic when any key is pressed. Simple enough. Now, this is actually super convenient because up to this point, you may have noticed some weirdness where uh, inputs would consume one another. So if I try to do any key at this point, and I already had an action up higher in this list bound to something else. So for example, I had up on the keyboard bound to jump P2. And then I have any key, which fires for any key. Well, if I actually pressed up, jump P2 would fire and any key would not. There's actually a priority order in these action mappings and axis mappings that will make it so if there is one that already catches an event, another one of these action mappings may not catch the event, depending on your settings. And what they call that is consuming input. So if jump P2 consumes the up input, none of the events below it, none of the action mappings below it, would ever fire events because the input was consumed by jump P2. The other ones don't even capture that. What we need to do in code today is make sure that we have any key work for literally any key, like it, it will fire for any key, because no inputs get consumed by other inputs. And so the way we do this is here. Once we get to the code, let's go to baseplayercontroller.h and let's take a look 
at what I've added for this episode. So I've added two things. I added a function that I call determine input device details. And so what this is going to do is based on the input that was pressed, what logic do we have to do? So if it's an input that is a gamepad input, we are going to want to make sure we are using the gamepad rules from now on. But if it is a keyboard input, we may want to use the keyboard rules. And the same stuff applies for when we do X input versus D input. We're going to have to separate it. We don't necessarily have to like break it out and do it all again, but we just have to know what input we're using so we know what types of inputs to expect. All right. So make a function that supports this. And I'm calling it determine input device details and I have F key key pressed as my parameter here. So we will capture the key that is pressed that calls this function and then we'll know what to do with it from there. F key is a standard Unreal type to for keys or really inputs in general. So this will capture gamepad and keyboard. It's not just keys on a keyboard. That's just what they call their their structure for keys. And then I've added a Boolean is input device gamepad. Okay, so what this means is if this device is a gamepad, we determine that the, the last key that was pressed is a gamepad, then this controller, this player controller is being controlled by an actual gamepad in real life, not the keyboard. So gamepads are different from keyboards. Gamepad is a physical controller like an Xbox controller, PlayStation controller. Keyboard is its own thing. It's the keyboard or a large device with lots of keys sometimes falls under the same thing. Like if you see an arcade cabinet with all those buttons on there, sometimes they're not considered game pads. So it can be confusing, but to keep it simple, game pad is dealing with a physical controller like an Xbox controller, PlayStation controller. Keyboard is just dealing with the keyboard. That's how we're gonna think of it. Okay, so those are the two things that we need. In the base player controller, you can go ahead and set the default value for the is input device gamepad if you want. I actually did not. Um, it's going to be set almost immediately anyway, but we'll go ahead and set it. We're going to set it to false by default. That way it's a keyboard by default. Okay, you can do that in your begin play. The important step comes here and set up input component. All right, so let's take away some of the confusing stuff for a second here. And let's just take a look at what we know. All right. So start with this. Go ahead and bind the any key action mapping that we just set up or just renamed from any key menu in your base player controller and bind it to your new function. Determine input device details. Quick refresher. Bind action, what it does is when this input is either pressed or released, depending on what this is, this is the class that we're calling on it, so that base player controller, and this is the function we're calling on it. So once this key is pressed, we're going to go to this class, or really this object reference, to then call this function. Okay. So you've seen this a lot before if you've been following this series. If you haven't, it's not a big deal. It's just going to call this function when anything mapped to this action mapping is pressed. Now, uh, something weird you may have noticed is that we actually added a parameter here, and we're calling this function through an action map. And you're like, where's the where, where's the input parameter? Well, the any key event in particular actually passes in the key that is pressed. You can see this in a blueprint. If you actually were to grab your any key action event here, you can see that there's a key that's passed in. We don't normally see that in code when we're looking at it, but it's true. It actually does pass this in. Okay. So there you go. We can capture, you can always capture a key event from any of your action mappings when you do it through this method. You can add in the button or the key that was pressed by adding that parameter in the function definition. All right. So this is what you're used to seeing. Now I've done some complicated stuff here, or at least it looks complicated, but it's really not that bad. And I wanna show you what exactly it is. So let's look at the first one. We have two methods of doing this. The first method of dealing with the, the consuming input that we have to address. 
is that we don't want either any key to consume input because think of it this way. If our any key event consumes my X button press, well, if my X button is bound to the light attack, I still wanna do the light attack. So I don't want the any key to consume it. On the other hand, if any key is meant to fire when I press any button, well, I have to make sure the any key event is still receiving that because I am still pressing a button on my keyboard. So I don't want either of the events to consume input. In this case, what I could do is uh, tell the individual bindings not to consume input. Okay, that's our first example. Now, this bind action actually returns a result. You might not know that because we've never used it. So input component bind action actually returns an F input action binding. And then you can go ahead and set your specific parameters on it. So in this case, what you could do is have your bind action here. This is what we had written up above. And you could set it equal to this right here, F input action binding. And I just called it any key binding. Then down below, I have any key binding dot B consume input equals false. So this any key won't consume other inputs. This is useful if you want some inputs to consume inputs and some inputs not to consume inputs because you can manually choose which ones you want to consume other inputs. So I've decided to just show you option two. So I'm gonna get rid of this. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna get rid of this. Okay, and I'm gonna set it back to how we had it. All right, so this is how mine looks now. I have this other chunk of uncommon code, and this is what we're gonna use today. So what I'm doing is, since I don't want any of my action bindings to consume inputs, I'm going to loop through all my action bindings and just set them to not consume. All right, so four is a standard for loop, so for i equals zero, i is less than input component get num action bindings. It's a function that the in component has that will return to you the number of action bindings increment i inside the for loop we're going to get action binding at index i and then set dot b consume input to false this will make it so all of our inputs can still go through they can do their actions and then they can also still call this function when the any key event picks them up so no action mappings or consuming inputs of any other action mappings basically if an if an input is found in more than one action mapping, all of the action mappings containing that input will still be able to do their logic. Okay, and so with that, now we'll be able to capture these events properly, and then we can do logic anytime any input is pressed. Let's go ahead and make this function here in the base player controller CPP. So I'm gonna scroll down and I put it above tick, but you can put it wherever you want. So we need to have determined input device details with our key pressed being passed in. And the logic in here for today is very simple. We don't have super complex logic because we're just able to switch on the fly. But what we wanna do is make sure that our, as we press an input, it's checked for what type of device it is that had pressed that input. And then we're going to set our Boolean to be, yes, it's a gamepad, no, it's not a gamepad, and allow player control from there. Okay, so the F key structure actually has a very convenient key. It says is gamepad key, and it can determine if it's a gamepad or a keyboard or some other type of input device that actually triggered the input that came into this action mapping. And so if the F key is a gamepad key, we can say, we can set our is input device gamepad to true. The The device that actually pressed the button, the player pressed the button on manually was a gamepad. So we can set this Boolean to true. If this returns else, we know at the very least that it's not a gamepad. It could be a keyboard and it could be a few other devices. Like I said, there, you have some VR devices and some other strange things that can make it return uh, false. But we know at the very least it is not a gamepad or not a gamepad that Unreal recognizes. Okay, we won't get into that right now because that's more complicated, but it's not a gamepad is the assumption we can make at this point. So we want to set it to false. Now, 
this is good because this is on the controller. So individual controllers will know if they are a gamepad or not. And that is what we need. That is very important. In today's episode, I'm not using multiple controllers. We will in next week's episode, and you will see why this is so important. Right now, it might not seem like much, but it is incredibly important to know each each device and if they're a gamepad or not. Okay? So that's that. There is something we need to do to make our move right and move right controller functions work based off this logic, because right now this won't really have any effect. If we do this, we're going to see basically the same thing that we were seeing the whole time, which is you can use either the keyboard or the gamepad. So let's go to fighter template character .cpp, and we're going to go to our move right function. Okay. So move right in it. There was an if statement that we had where we check the base game instance for is device for multiple players. If it is, we use the standard move right function. If it's not, we're going to use the move right controller function because in the move right controller function, we use not game instance is device for multiple players. Okay, so we were previously just checking that one Boolean and that was good enough. Unfortunately, that's not good enough in the long run because you could have someone playing on a keyboard and then you could have someone playing on a controller. There is no way to know if if you have that mix there where not everyone's on a controller or not everyone's on the keyboard. There's no way to know from that one Boolean alone what uh, player is on what gamepad. So we need to now change this logic. We can keep our Boolean. It's still okay to know this because we still want to know uh, potentially if there is a keyboard in play or a device in play that can hold multiple players. We're not getting rid of all that logic. That's still good. It's still fine. We're actually bettering it because we're going to transfer all this logic over to player controllers. And so we don't need to have as much of a hack in here for this special case. But in move right controller, the logic I've commented out, I'm going to remove. I'm going to have new logic. So we're in move right controller, okay? And I'm checking to see if the controller is input device gamepad. So all I've done to do this, it's super simple, is I've added an if statement above that previous check we had. And I check if auto controller equals cast to our controller class using the get controller function. Get controller is something you can call on a character uh, or any possessable object to get the control that's currently possessing it. Okay. And so we have get controller being casted to our base controller class, which is going to have this is input device gamepad. So if this succeeds, it'll go into the if statement. And then we have this other if statement to make sure that it is a gamepad before doing any move right controller logic. This is important because uh, we currently, again, we have them separate, move right and move right controller. If you choose not to separate them, you'll have to branch the, the functionality within that function, and that's okay. But we have two separate functions. So thinking of it that way, we have to make sure we do not let input through from both at the same time. Okay. Now, you might have an error when you do this because you probably don't have access to your base player controller. We'll cover that in a second. Let's go back up to our move right function. Okay, here's standard move right, not move right controller. This is the opposite of move right controller. So we only want to do the move right logic if not controller is input device gamepad. See the exclamation mark. And so if it's not a gamepad, we want to do the standard keyboard move right logic. Okay, you have to do the same thing here as before. You have to add an if statement above this if auto controller, a base player controller, get controller. Another thing that's important, I didn't mention this before, this if statement is going to surround basically everything else in the function except for the if statement above it. So don't be confused. I know it looks a little confusing, but you can follow the dotted lines to see where the if statement goes to. So here's my if auto controller if statement. I'm going to follow it down for you, okay, for move right. See that? It goes all the way down to this bracket. Okay. Oops. So it's nothing confusing. Just add another if statement, add the ending bracket to the if at the very bottom of the function. And this goes for move right controller as well. I'll 
show you just so it's clear okay here's my if statement getting the player controller here's the bracket the bottom bracket goes all the way down to the very bottom all right I know these functions are big because there's a lot of specific logic if they're holding this way and press this way and it can get confusing but long story short is just add that if statement and then add the corresponding if statement for if it's a gamepad or if it is not a gamepad okay and this will allow you to now use both of your input devices so a gamepad and a keyboard and move accordingly and you can have them plugged in at the same time and use them and you're not able to do double inputs with them which is great that's what we want that's what we need all right now the what we have to do is make sure we include this base player controller at the top of our class so if you just scroll up in your fighter template character cpp you can add an include for the base player controller dot h class and then your error should go away you should be able to cast that type everything should be good okay and now we can go back into unreal after you've built that and everything now we can go back to our game load it up could be using the gamepad for this load our stage I'll skip my entrances and i can use my gamepad for player one and the keyboard for player one as well at the same time uh, but well i can't use them both at the same time i can use them both during the same match without changing any other settings okay i can do all my standard things for both gamepad and controller now another thing that we'll be able to do is we still will be able to control player two with the keyboard and if you plugged in two controllers that logic should still work as well so you can plug in two controllers and control both characters one thing that is a little bit strange right now is if i am moving my second player in the game or really my second character in the game and i am to use my controller you'll see that it will work fine they can work hand in hand and of course if i use both my keyboard players that will still work but if I'm using my controller first and then I click a button or a key on the keyboard, it will actually stop the input of the controller. This is because player two right now is they are bound to their own player controller. However, the any key event that we set up is capturing all inputs. And so it doesn't differentiate between player one and player two. It'll only differentiate between input devices. So in the case of the keyboard where we have multiple players on one device any key is going to pick up any of those values and it's going to say oh you're now a keyboard so that is a bug however we are going to fix that in the next episode because we're going to completely get rid of the hacky logic that we were doing where we were separating the inputs in the character bp for the mutant or for any of the characters really so we'll still have keyboard mode we're not getting rid of that but we're going to do it a better way now that we have this new method that we're setting up for the auto detection of player controllers. So bear with me on that. Just know that that is an issue. So if you're seeing that, that is known and that is going to be fixed. But otherwise, now you can see, you can start to see it come together. You can see that we can use our gamepad and our keyboard. And we're going to do a lot more with this to make it a lot better and have a lot more functionality. That way we have more freedom over how players play our game. Anyway, guys, that is all I got. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please subscribe. There's more for myself and the channel than anything else you can do. I just really appreciate it. I want to give a huge shout out to all my YouTube membership and Patreon supporters and subscribers. Thank you guys for everything that you've done. I'm really grateful. I really, really appreciate it. And I'm just having a fantastic time working on these games. Glad you guys are enjoying them as well. If you had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. Be happy to help you out and get you moving along in the series. And anyway, like I said, guys, that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.